So, Gundam Seed. I know a ton of people despise anime, especially Gundam fans. It has its flaws, but it has its strengths, I guess. If you were clicking on this review expecting me to bash the hell out of it, then sorry to disappoint you, but that's not at all what I'm going to do. Yes, I will point out its flaws, but I also want to point out what I liked about it, so let's get into the review. The story is basically about a war that is taking place between naturals and coordinators. Naturals are regular humans, and coordinators are genetically enhanced humans who are capable of greater things than naturals. So this is a show basically about space racism. Or as I call it, spacism. The main character is Kira Yamato, who is a coordinator living in neutral territory that is being attacked by the organization Zaft, who are comprised of coordinators. He basically becomes involved in the war, and hilarity ensues. So let's start with Kira. Kira is a crybaby. He hates the idea of war, and every time he kills someone, he just cries. His justification for killing is because he has to protect a ship called the Archangel, which his friends are on. But buddy, you don't have to cry every time you kill someone in a fucking war. If someone is trying to kill you or your friends, then you should probably just kill them, because if you don't, they'll come back and try again. Or someone else will kill them. Halfway through the series, after almost being killed by his best friend, Atherin, he suddenly becomes a wise old man and still refuses to kill people. With one exception. After this point, he becomes the most OP character in mecha anime history. This motherfucker, who is new to battles, fucking annihilates other people who have had training and have been fighting forever. And the Gundams he get are also overpowered. The Freedom Gundam can fucking target a million other mobile suits, and when it fires at them, he's able to aim perfectly at their non-vital areas and not kill any of them. And I guess they explain his OP-ness being due to him being experimented on as a kid and turned into the ultimate coordinator. Kira Yamato is what happens when you give a crybaby too much power. His best friend, Athran Zala, is on the opposite side of Kira, and he pretty much only fights because he's confused and probably also the fact that his dad owns Zath. Zath is the organization of the coordinators. Athran is reserved and usually quiet. His character does develop pretty well, and he does end up fighting alongside Kira towards the end. But the bad thing is his character basically resets itself in the sequel. There are a million characters in the series, so I'm going to dwindle it down into categories, so let's talk about the ladies of Gundam Seed. Lacus Klein is basically a pop idol whose father is a politician, so everyone worships the ground she walks on. She is typical nice anime girl who can do no wrong, which makes her a perfect match for Kira, even though she's engaged to Atherin at the start of the series. Her singing is annoying as shit, and I find myself getting bored whenever she's on screen. The song that she sings in This Quiet Night plays so much in the first half of Seed, and I just never want to hear it again. I feel like she was added to the show just to give Kira a love interest. But I guess she is the main reason Atherin went to see Kira and join his side. The next girl, Kigali, is fucking awesome. She is a fighter and does whatever the fuck she wants. But eventually we find out that she's a literal princess of the neutral nation of Orb. But despite this, she still kicks ass. I immensely enjoyed her relationship with Atherin because when I watched this as a kid, I did not expect the two of them to get together. I wish the mobile suit she got in the last episodes were used more often, but oh well. Oh, and for some reason they tried to trick the viewer into thinking she and Kira would get together until they decided to make them siblings. So pretty much they pulled the Star Wars. Don't really see why they needed to be siblings, but okay. Too bad Kigali's character also resets in the sequel. Now let's talk about Flay. Flay is a bitch. That's it. Okay, okay, I get why she's a bitch. She's the way she is because her dad was killed and she blames the coordinators, but she still has this racist ass attitude before this stuff even happened. She, like, mocks the coordinators. She says, don't get friendly with me, coordinators. She, like, shit talks them all the time. So this this only becomes worse when her dad gets killed by the coordinators. Flay and Kira were that couple that everybody else thinks should break up, and thankfully they do. I think the writers also hated Flay because she does not appear as much in the second half of the series. Maybe that's why they killed her off, too. Good. Oh! I could talk about this penis breath trash all day, but I won't. Murray Ramius is the captain of the Archangel, which is the main ship of the show. She's the best girl for reasons. She's a tough woman with a soft heart, and she's just great. Enough said. Mulaflaga is a natural, and he's just, he's a badass pilot who's carefree and funny and... He and 
he and Rami has ended up together, and it's it's amazing until he gets killed. But does he really get killed? Uh, well, uh, we'll see. There are a bunch of minor characters, and when I say a bunch, I mean a shit ton. There are so many minor characters that if I talked about them all, this video would never end. Some of them die, and some of them don't. But when they die, you remember that they do, and you remember who they are. Rao is an interesting villain, and he basically just wants to destroy the world because he's fucking evil. So, there's that. Next, I'm going to talk about the animation. You might as well just call this show the Stock Clip Gundam. There are shit ton of reuse clips. A shit ton. When you watch this show, you will recognize a reuse clip when you see one. Even when they change openings and endings, they keep the clips from the opening and ending before it. From what I gathered, they wasted their budget all on voice actors, so that's why they had to reuse clips. It's mostly in the fights, so many argue that the fights aren't interesting due to that. Other than that, the animation looked fine to me. The character designs are weird, and that's mostly in the faces. Everyone looks like they have baby faces. I don't care what anyone says though, I fucking love these Gundam designs. The mobile suit designs look really badass and colorful, and they just, they just look badass. Especially the Forbidden, with its damn shield cloak thing and that fucking scythe. The Freedom also had a badass design, and the multiple targeting attack was cool despite it being OP as fuck. Again, please nerf Kira in the next patch. The music is phenomenal. Every opening and ending had good music. This 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 show taught me what good J-pop is. Fucking Nami Tamaki, if you don't know who that is, go go look that up. She's she's great. The background music fits every scene perfectly, and I still listen to the songs to this day. Now I'm going to give my opinion on the story as a whole. So here we go. You ready? It's fine. It's not amazing, but I found myself getting interested in watching each episode. I watched this show originally in middle school when it was on Toonami, and this shit blew my mind as a kid. I've never seen so much death in an anime as a kid, and this pretty much opened me up to anime. I'm aware of all the flaws, and I agree that this show isn't that great, but I still enjoy it. I think the idea of Naturals coordinators fighting is interesting, and the character deaths are necessary. Well, apparently the studio didn't think that. Kira's kind of annoying, but I still kind of feel bad for the shit that he goes through. I guess I only really enjoy this show because of nostalgia. For that reason, I cannot bring myself to hate it. Gundam Seed Destiny, on the other hand. Oh, we'll get to that. 